Okay, this video is the third, I would say, in a series of three videos that I've made. The first one we talked about and how to calculate the, uh, derive the equation and calculate the Bohr radius. And the second one we went through how to calculate the energy for each of the energy levels in the hydrogen atom using the Bohr model. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Bohr velocities. I don't even know if that's a real term, but the velocity for each of the energy levels and how that corresponds to each of the energies for the energy levels. Okay, so here we are, have our diagram for hydrogen atom. We have a positively charged nucleus. We have a negatively charged electron. The electron is going around in this direction. And we know when we have an object traveling in a circular path that the angular momentum for that object is L, is the angular momentum, is equal to the mass of the object, this case an electron, times the velocity of the electron, times the radius, which is, this, the, we're going to start with N1, so this would be the Bohr radius, times the sine of the angle of theta, the angle theta, Theta, in this case, being the angle between the radial vector and the velocity vector, that's 90 degrees, sine of 90 is 1. So that for, therefore, that equation simplifies that the angular velocity is equal to m, the mass of the electron, times its velocity, times the radius. Now, you'll remember, as in the previous video I mentioned, Bohr was trying to come up with a reason for the observation for the hydrogen uh, spectrum, the emission spectrum of hydrogen, that we see these bright lines. You don't see a continuous spectrum. You only see energy emitted at very specific wavelengths, very specific energies and frequencies. And he was trying to figure out why is that. And he came up with the idea, well, if you only see these specific bright lines, then that the angular momentum of the electron must be quantized. And he hypothesized that it must be quantized by whole numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, n being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are like the principal quantum numbers, times h, which is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. So that is how Bohr came up with this explanation for seeing these bright lines. You don't have an infinite number of uh, possible uh, radii or energy levels for hydrogen atom or for atoms, you just have these very specific quantized energy levels. So that means the angular momentum is quantized, and we saw earlier the radii and the energies, and now we're going to see a little bit about the velocities too. So we're going to take this equation and solve for the velocity, and we get that the velocity, well not the velocity yet, but mvr is equal to nh 2 pi, and then we get the velocity is simply equal to n the principal quantum number times h, Planck's constant divided by 2 times pi times m times r. So that's the equation we can use to calculate the velocity of an electron at each of the energy levels. And we're going to do that first, of course, for the energy level at the bottom, the ground state, where n equals 1. Remember, ground state is n equals 1, not n equals 0. There is no n equals 0. n equals 1 is the ground state. And then each of the excited states is like n2, n3, n4, and so on. So we have n is 1 times Planck's constant 6.63 times 10 minus 34 joule seconds divided by 2 times pi times the mass of the electron, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms times the Bohr radius. Okay, for 1, this is the Bohr radius, which we found in the very first video, is 5.3 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. And we can solve that, and we get that that is just about 2.19, I think it's 2.188, 2.19 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. That's the velocity of the electron, so to speak, because uh, it's actually moving around that electron cloud, but that's like the velocity of the electron at the first energy level, which is the ground state. Now, we don't typically think of the electrons as having velocities, and we don't talk about the velocity so much, but it's interesting we should convert that into the electron volts, because that's usually how we refer to the energy levels with their electron volts and their corresponding energies. So we can take that velocity, and we can use the kinetic energy equation, Ke, kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, and we can get the kinetic energy in joules. We just plug those values in, 1 half. 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 times 2.19 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Don't forget to square just the velocity, not the meters, square the velocity, and you get that the kinetic energy of the electron at that energy level at the ground state is 2.18 times 10 to the minus uh, 18 joules. And since we don't really talk about joules, we talk about electron volts, we can convert that. We know that one electron volts equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And that gives us 13.6 electron volts. 
Now I put minus in here mostly just because out of habit because we define that value to be negative because we define the energy to be zero when it's infinitely far away, but it's just 13.6 electron volts. Okay, now let's look at this equation. This is the equation we just used to come up with that value. And you'll notice here we have n, this is for like a general equation, n, the velocity at any energy level n is equal to nh divided by 2 pi m r r n. And we know that the radius from the first video we did can be found, the radius at energy at any energy level is just n squared times r1, r1 being the Bohr radius 5.3 times 10 to the minus 6, minus 11, excuse me, minus electron meters, 11 meters. So I'm going to substitute that value in for our general equation. So now we have nh divided by 2 pi m n squared times r1. And you notice I have an n and an n squared here. I'm going to factor those out. So I get that value like that. I just have h and 2 pi m r1, the Bohr radius, times n over n squared. And I have n over n squared. And I can simplify that to 1 divided by n. So this is the equation. Really, if you put these values in here, because if we use this equation, this is, uh, this is 1 up here. If we even we plug that value in here, this is also 1. It simplifies back down to this equation for R1. But So this is the term that equals the correct velocity, 2.19 times 10 to the 6 um, meters per second. And then for the get the velocities at the subsequent or the excited states, n2, n3, n4, we just multiply by 1 over 2, which is dividing by 2, or divide by 3, or divide by 4. And let's just do that. And you'll see how the velocities and the energy levels all correspond nicely for the expected energies for the hydrogen atom. So here I have the equation we had on the previous page. And as I'll mention this in a moment, uh, we'll go through this. This is the kinetic energy equation, obviously. So for N1, which we already did, the velocity is 2.188 or 2.19 times 10 to the 6. And you get, when you, when you change that from the velocity to the kinetic energy, to the electron volts, you get 13.6 electron volts. Now for the next one, all we got to do is take this value, and it's going to be n equals 2. If we use this equation, n equals 2, then we get the value here, 2.188 times 10 to the 6, and we're just going to divide that in half. So we get 1.094 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Now we're going to put that velocity into this equation to get the kinetic energy and then get the electron volts, but we're going to square that. So then you'll notice that the energy ends up being one-fourth. 3.4, which is the energy level for the first excited state in hydrogen, is one-fourth of 13.6. All right, now we're going to do the same thing for n equals 3. We would divide the velocity by 3, but then when we square it, we end up with an energy that's one-ninth. So the energy at the third energy level, which is the second excited state, is 1.51 times, not 1.51 times 10, but just 1.51 electron volts, which is one-ninth of 13.6. We do the same thing for all the rest, which is mostly we'll go up to n equals 4. So we take a velocity that's one-fourth of this. When we square that one-fourth, we get a sixteenth. So therefore, the energy in electron volts at the fourth energy level, which is the third excited state is 0 0.85 electron volts, which is 1 16th of the value at the ground state when n equals 1. Okay, so there you go. I kind of think that's really interesting and shows you how all those things are related to each other and how it all fits nicely together. The radii, the energies, and the velocities. They're kind of all the same thing, really. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel and get all my excellent physics, chemi physics, chemistry, and math videos. Also, give me a thumbs up and comment. Those things really help my channel. I'm trying to make it to 100,000 subscribers. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share the video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.